Hello everyone and welcome to the 2023 Umoja Act Africa. My name is Nelson and I'll be taking you through this year's Intermediate Challenge. For this challenge, we'll try to identify illegal cryptocurrency mining using online traffic recorded from users' computers. In this tutorial will go over four key items. First, we'll take a look at what crypto jacking is, how it's related to cryptocurrency mining, and what data science's role is in detecting and more importantly, preventing it. Afterwards, we'll see how we can make full use of the resources available on Zindi, including the vast community of data scientists, much like yourself, to learn more about how we to beat the challenge and get to the top of the leaderboard. We'll then look at how we can get started on the challenge, trying out a basic approach to solve the problem, making our first submission, and seeing how we place on the leaderboard. The final part of the tutorial will cover some techniques you can use to improve the performance of your model, as well as ensure good practice in developing AI solutions. First things first. What exactly is crypto jacking? Well, cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum are usually acquired through a process known as mining. When mining, users utilize their computer's processing power to solve complex puzzles, complete, completing what is known as a proof of work. Each proof of work completed is awarded in the cryptocurrency mine, and the more proof of work is completed, the more cryptocurrency one gets. Completing a proof of work is, however, a computationally demanding task owing to the complexity of the puzzles that need to be solved. To resolve this constraint, developers of large cryptocurrency mining operations create scripts that users can run on their computers, allowing crypto mining warehouses to make use of collective resources to speed up the mining process. Crypto jacking is when hackers utilize scripts, much like those developed for large mining operations, to take over computers' computational resources without a user's knowledge allowing them to increase their mining capabilities and in turn, generate large profits for themselves. These attacks often leave users with slower machines and at times lead to total system collapses. Now that we're familiar with crypto jacking, let's take a look at the challenge and familiarize ourselves with the platform while we're at it. To access the challenge, we're gonna search for Zindi.Africa and once on the site, we're gonna head over to compete and select hackathons. Notice that the Umoja hack challenges are at the top of the page, so let's navigate to the intermediate challenge and get started. Every challenge on Zindi has more or less a similar layout, with the first page being the challenge description, along with details related to how the model you build will be evaluated and what you stand to win should you place high on the leaderboard. It is absolutely essential that you go through the details on this page, and even more important are the rules at the end of the page. These will guide you on good practice while on the platform, as well as what to do to ensure the integrity of your solution so as to maintain your ranking once the competition closes. Next, we have the data section, where once the competition goes live, we'll have access to the training and test data, which we'll use to build and test our models, as well as a starter notebook and a sample submission file to illustrate basic modeling techniques and how to prepare a submission. The leaderboard is where we'll be able to see once we make our first, as well as any subsequent submission, how well our model performs compared to previous iterations or when compared to other competitors. You will rank based on your submission score, and it's your job throughout the hackathon to try and beat the best score. Now that we've seen a bit about the platform, I think we're just about ready to dive into the challenge. Moja hack challenges are usually closed hackathons, meaning you need a secret code to join. Let's go ahead and read through the rules. Please do take your time and go through them at your own pace. Once we're familiar with the rules, we're going to enter our secret code and accept the rules, and we'll be ready to kick things off. Notice that there's a few new sections added to the competition page. Over here, we have the discussions page where you'll be able to interact with the many other data scientists in this challenge, including myself and the other quite talented members of the Zendi team. Now, Let's see how we can go about modeling crypto jacking. For this video, we'll be making use of Google's collaboratory. We'll head on over to collab.research.google.com, and once the page loads up, we'll click on File and it'll upload our notebook. At the very top of the notebook, we have a description of the challenge, much like the one on the competition page, as well as a table of contents with a list of the various sections included in our notebook. In the first section, we have all the libraries we'll be using to process our data and in turn build our model using said data. 
It's important to note, however, that you don't necessarily have to know what libraries you need to use beforehand and that you can continuously add to the list of libraries as you progress through your analysis. Once we've loaded the libraries, we'll proceed to load and inspect our data. And since the data for this challenge comes in tabular form, we'll be utilizing the pandas library and its many built-in methods. One function that immediately comes in handy when inspecting the data is the head method, where we can take a look at the few first rows in our data set. The method takes in a few parameters which can be used to specify things like the number of rows displayed, and the converse of this method would be the tail function, which outputs the last few rows in the data set. Let's now check the dimensions of our data sets using the shape method. This outputs the number of rows and columns in each respective data set, and we can see that the training data has a few more rows compared to the test set as well as an extra column, which would have to be the target column. Also note that the sample submission file has the same number of rows as the test data, since we'll be predicting for the same number of samples as in the test set. Next, let's look at a few summary statistics to help us understand our data better. And for this, we'll use the describe method from pandas. This prints out a table with summaries taken across all rows for each variable in our data set. These not only help us understand the distribution of our data, but can also be extracted as features to help improve model performance through a process known as feature engineering. It's always important to identify any missing values in the data and figure out ways to mitigate them, as these often skew results and even render some models, such as the famous neural networks, completely obsolete. Like for us, however, the brilliant minds at Cindy got us a clean data set with no missing values or duplicates. Once we have an understanding of the features, it's essential that we take a look at the target, and most specifically, we need to understand how the target variable is distributed. This is important since a class imbalance could result in our model over or under predicting on a specific class, and this in turn affects our model's performance on the test set, but more importantly, on new data from a significantly different source. It's always easier to understand distributions using graphical representation. And based on our plots, it's clear that there's a class imbalance in our target variable, and we would need to account for this, at least when fine-tuning our model. Next, we'll try and relate our features with the target just to see how well they serve as predictors of cryptojacking. For this purpose, we'll use a correlation matrix, which outputs the correlation coefficients of each variable with another, and as usual, we'll visualize this to get a better grasp of things. The coefficient of correlation between two variables ranges from minus 1 to positive 1 and indicates how one variable's change affects the other, with 1 indicating a strong negative or positive correlation or effect, and 0 indicating no effect at all. As seen from our plot, the label is only weakly correlated to most variables, meaning that there is a strong relationship between our target and most predictors. Just to quickly go over the last few points, we've loaded the libraries needed and use the pandas library to load the data sets as well as get a summary of the features included in the data. We then took a look at the target and how it's related to the features and we figured out that there's an imbalance in the target classes and that the target is only weakly correlated with the features. And now it's time to get our hands dirty. For the starter solution, we'll implement a logistic regression model from the cyclic learn library. We're going to be fitting our model onto the data set and using the fitted model to detect cryptojacking activity. However, in order to get an understanding of our model's performance, we're going to split the train data into two sets, one of which we'll use to train the model and the other we'll utilize as a validation set. Once split, the model is fit onto the new train set and predictions are made on the validation set, after which we print out a classification report. The report indicates our model obtained a 0.71 weighted F1 score on the validation set. We then proceed to make predictions on the test set and create a submission file with the predictions as well as their corresponding IDs. Now that we've seen how we can get started, there are a few things you can do to improve your model's performance. Remember we mentioned something about using summary statistics as features? Well, feature engineering such as that is one way that many use to create robust models that score high on the leaderboard. Extracting and creating new features helps the model learn more useful patterns that help improve its predictions. It is important, however, that while trying to improve the model's predictions, we ensure that we're not overfitting on the train set. Much like how we divided our train data and used part of it to monitor our model's performance, a more effective method would be to utilize cross-validation, where we train and validate on several splits of the data. This helps ensure the model fits well on all the data we have. You should also be sure to read through the literature, incorporating knowledge from the field, and figuring out what features are most useful 
when detecting crypto jacking, as well as how to potentially combine and extract new features from the ones in the data. With all that said, I wish you the very best of luck in this year's hack hackathon. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the leaderboard.